Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to my 10 minute tutorials this week. Um, I know there's a lot going on in the world right now, so I thought today I would just offer a few poses and a little gentle flow for the body to prepare for a good night's rest. So you can do this at nighttime just to help you sleep better um, at night. So the first pose uh, that I think is really great to do before bed is to just take a hero's pose. So exactly how I'm sitting, I'm sitting on my heels right now and I'm sitting nice and tall. So what this does is it's a gentle compression to the knees and the ankles. So we'll get blood flow back to those joints and we're just gonna sit here and focus on our breath. So after a long day, you might want to close your eyes and just find a slower, even breath. And by doing so and taking this time, we're just slowing down the heart rate and calming the parasympathetic nervous system. Now this might not be accessible for you, so you can always lay on your back and hug your knees into your chest, or you can sit up on a block between your ankles if that adds a little bit of elevation for you. From here, you can take some cat cows to just open up through the spine in the seated position. So I like to put my hands on my knees and inhale, lift the heart, lift the gaze, and then exhale round and curl through the spine. And if you can't see what that looks like, I'm just opening through the chest, Inhaling and exhaling, rounding and curling through the spine. And this will help to open up through the spine and add a little bit of decompression because sometimes we're standing or we're sitting in one position throughout the day. So that will just help to really just open up through the front and back side of the body at the end of the day. Another seated posture that I really like to take at the end of a long day is just letting one ear, so I'll start with my right ear, fall towards my right shoulder. And then I'm gonna reach over with my right hand towards my left ear or jawline. And then from here, I'll start to walk my fingertips out to the left, still sitting tall through the spine, and I'm just finding a gentle stretch down the arm, up through the shoulders. If you wanna to start to feel this even in the nerves, you have a lot of nerves in the upper back that run down the arm. You can flex the hand and reach the heel of the palm down towards the earth. So it might feel more intense depending on how tight your shoulders are. And then you'll just gently switch sides. So I'll bring my left ear towards my left shoulder and bring my right hand down and I'll just flex through the right palm. Or if that's too intense, just walk the fingertips out to the side. Good. I'm still breathing. I'm finding that even breath that I found at the very beginning. From here, a simple transition is just finding a child's pose. So you can keep your knees together if you want more of a low back release or a little bit wider apart if that feels comfortable in your body. Your arms can reach forward or you can reach them back by your side. So again, what this looks like from the side is this. And if you wanna rest a block under the forehead, you can. And what I'm doing is I'm breathing into the upper, middle, and lower back, starting to open up more through the back, decompressing. And I'm still finding that little compression through the knees and ankles here. And if your forehead actually reaches the ground or the block, you can just massage it side to side, giving yourself a little forehead massage, which feels really great. We hold a lot of tension in the face throughout the day. Good. Good. So from here, we'll come on to our back. So I have a pillow and the pillow is just a great extra support. You can use two pillows. Not everyone has a really long pillow. If you have a bolster at home or blocks, that's also really great. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start just by doing a pigeon pose on my back. And I like to use the wall. So we'll use the pillow a little bit later. 
But for reclined pigeon, I'm just gonna bring one leg to the wall. I'm gonna start with my left leg. And then I'm gonna bring my right ankle across. Now this is a pretty deep reclined pigeon. If this is too intense, you can simply scoot further away from the wall. So whatever feels best in your body. I just like having the support of the wall there. So I don't have to work so hard. I'm not pulling my leg in. My upper body is nice and relaxed. And I'm just holding and breathing. I'm working my right knee forward. If you want to take a more passive approach, you can just press into the thigh with the hand. And at the same time, I'm letting some blood flow start to come back towards the heart. And breathing. I'm just starting to open up through the hips. We hold a lot of tension there throughout the day. And then make sure to do both sides. Now, if this is too intense, another option you could do is you could take Baddha Konasana against a wall, so scooting your hips all the way up to the wall, and then just bringing the soles of the feet together to touch and the knees open wide against the wall. So just a supported pose to open up through the hips after a long day. And notice when you're lying on your back, the spine is nice and elongated, but you don't have to use the supporting muscles to keep the spine erect. Easy transition from here is just to legs up the wall pose. So for legs up the wall, I like to have a pillow nearby because sometimes if you have tight hamstrings or tight hip flexors, it's gonna be hard to have your legs flat against the wall. And they don't have to be, but if you do wanna get the butt all the way up against the wall, you can just have a pillow underneath you or some blankets even might work and you'll have your legs overhead. Now a few options if you wanna have more support is you can tie a strap around your legs, or I sometimes like to put a blanket over my feet, tuck it underneath my heels, and then let the blanket sort of keep the feet glued together and you can pull it over your body and it's just really comforting. It adds a little extra layer of warmth. And then you'll just rest your palms by your side, you'll close your eyes, just find your breath. Again, in this pose, we're letting the lymph nodes drain. So we stand on our feet all day long. And when we have our legs up the wall and be pretty crony, you're letting the lymph drain out from the feet. And that helps reduce some fatigue as well. So just find your breath. See if you can let the blood pressure lower. Again, tapping into the parasympathetic nervous system. Right, so in all these postures, ideally you're holding them for longer than I'm showing. This is just for the purpose of my 10 minute tutorial. I have a couple more postures for you. So the first one is just gonna be a supine twist. So I like to just take a gentle supine twist at the end of the day. So both knees together. If you want to have one leg elongated, that's fine. And some people might decide that they just want to lay on their side in a um, sideline child's pose, and that's great as well. So maybe even start here in a sideline child's pose, and then to open up, you'll just open the heart. Now, in this scenario, your shoulder might not make it all the way down, depending on your mobility. If you're starting with your shoulders on the mat, and you know that you can't get your knees all the way down, just have a pillow nearby and let the knees fall onto the pillow and that way the shoulders will stay melted into the mat. This is great because when we're doing our supine twist, we're tapping into our rest and digest. So going to the left first, we're getting into that ascending colon, we're compressing that part of the digestive system and internal organs, and then we twist to the right, getting into the descending colon and that part of our digestive system, which all those sort of kick into gear when we're resting at night. Good. Another favorite of mine right before Shavasana or preparing for sleep is reclined bound angle. So I like to again put a pillow underneath me. You don't need it 
But all I'm gonna do, I'm sorry, my head sort of cut off here, so I'm gonna bring the soles of my feet together to touch, knees will open wide. And I'm just gonna find a resting posture. So I'm gonna start to let the hips release. That's why I have the support here, so I can fully relax. I'm gonna find a gentle stretch through my lower abdomen, my pelvis. And I'm just gonna let my palms rest face up by my side so my chest is opening. Now, this one is really great right before bed. You're getting more of an opening through the hips. Our hip flexors get really tight throughout the day if you're walking and sitting. And if this is too intense, you can always move your feet further away from you so it's a little bit longer of a bound angle. If it feels okay to bring them in closer, that's fine. But again, it's just to prepare for rest so it doesn't have to be your deepest pose. Of course, the final shape would just be a final Shavasana. So what we do at the end of class when we lay on our backs, palms face up, you can fall right asleep from there. It's um, just letting everything go, letting everything surrender, even trying to control the breath. So I hope those are helpful if you're having trouble sleeping. I know there's been a lot of shifting states in 2020. So um, hope these are some helpful postures and movements that you can take before bed and if you have any questions for me you can go ahead and message me and i hope everyone has a great day